Hey there, I'm Ryland, and I'm here to talk about the exciting new scheduled actions functionality, which just shipped with the Temporal Server v120 release. Scheduled actions is a successor to the existing Temporal Cron functionality, which is now becoming legacy um, moving forward. Um, temporal cron functionality has historically been one of the most popular features of temporal. Um, for my anecdotal experience, at least, it's one of the number one reasons why people end up adopting temporal initially, uh, because they're looking for some sort of durable, um, you know, cron solution out in the ecosystem, of which there are very few of, uh, and they end up finding temporal. So while this has been a very popular piece of functionality and you know it's a really powerful feature, um, anyone who's used it will know there's a bunch of practical uh, problems with it that kind of you know make the overall user experience not as great as we would like. Um, and so just to list a few of those, um, you know, right now the temporal cron uh, functionality can't be stopped without affecting the workflow that it itself starts. Um, the workflows that are started by the cron functionality conversely um, can't be terminated without affecting the cron itself. And so there's sort of like a bi-directional um, frustration there. Um, the cron jobs can't be paused. Um, they can't be updated or edited. Um, there's no support for the concept of overlapping runs. So what happens when the cron is set to fire and the previous thing that it fired still hasn't finished executing? Um, there is no way to kind of control that behavior. Um, when you started the cron, it was in an unqueryable state, which was just very frustrating. Um, and in general, there wasn't really a good story around like the visibility side of things of you know the, the temporal cron solution. Um, and so we knew how popular this functionality was. And so about a year ago, um, we started, you know, um, trying to look at how we could improve it and make things better because we knew we had all of these, you know, serious practical issues with it. Uh, and so at first we were looking at that very much from the lens of like, let's, let's iteratively improve what we have. Um, but it became clear pretty quickly that we were going to need to revisit things more fundamentally. Um, and so scheduled actions is uh, the result of that effort, a year of very hard work by, you know, especially one engineer at Temporal. Um, and so we're really, really excited about, you know, this revamped experience that will hopefully bring all the power and capabilities even more of what you got from Temporal Cron with a much better user experience. So um, today I'm just going to go over a quick demo of this new uh, scheduled actions functionality. Um, I'm doing this uh, in the TypeScript SDK because, um, you know, that was just the one that I kind of gravitated towards. Um, but this is something you can do from any of our major SDKs. Now, um, I will say that this is a sample in the temp temporal TypeScript samples that are available you know, on our GitHub. So if you want to follow along, this isn't just something that I have access to. You can go and, you know, check out this exact um, example of the scheduled actions yourself. So uh, to get into it, I'm going to cover the three major objects or configurations that you need to specify as part of a scheduled action in Temporal. Um, and I'll start with the action itself. Um, this one is very straightforward because today we are only supporting one type of action, which is a um, start workflow. Uh, and so why this is even here is that, you know, in the future, we would love for um, our system to be able to support the ability to do something else on a schedule, not just start a workflow. So say, for example, you know, send a signal. Um, but right now, just to keep things kind of simple and get the MVP out there, um, we only support the start, wor start workflow type. And so that's all we're going to be covering today. Now, um, these other three uh, ob arguments in the uh, action object um, are required for every scheduled action. Um, the first one is the workflow type. Uh, and this is specifying what the type of workflow you want to be started by your scheduled action is. And so this isn't the, the type of the schedule itself. This is the type of the workflow that will be started every time the schedule fires. Um, so in this case, we're using this um, pretty straightforward reminder workflow. Uh, it's a workflow which takes in a single argument that's called text and is a string. Um, and that string um, argument is passed immediately to two activities, one that's called add reminder to database here and one that's called uh, notify user. Um, so that workflow is pretty straightforward. Um, so that's what workflow type is specifying. Um, the next thing is the args. Um, and this is basically specifying what you want passed to this workflow, um, this reminder workflow, every time the schedule fires. Um, and so in this case, just to make this super concrete, that string that we saw um, in the args would be passed as this text value um, and then, you know, propagated to these activity calls. Um, so args can be, you know, uh, an array of different arguments if that's the way you've kind of defined your workflow signature. It can also be like a JSON object as it is normally with any um, start workflow execution. Then last but not least, you need to provide the uh, task queue. Um, not anything really specific to scheduled actions here. This is just a general requirement for any workflow you're starting in Temporal that you provide a task queue uh, for it to be delivered and run on. Cool. So that's it for the action, at least for the required um, properties. Um, there are other things that you can specify there um, that I'm not going to cover because they're enumerated quite well in the docs and explained there um, very, very uh, clearly and concisely. 
Um, so next we're going to talk about the, the spec configuration object. Um, this is the thing, maybe the most important part of the scheduled action configuration. Um, this actually determines how often your schedule is going to run. Um, and so there's two main formats that we support for this. Um, the first one is the interval format, which is like very straightforward and human readable. Um, so you can say something like every 10 seconds or once every two minutes or, you know, um, every other day. Um, and if it's very straightforward and kind of explicit, um, the interval format is great for representing that. Now, if you want to specify something that's a bit more granular and precise, um, we also support this calendar format, um, which allows you to have a lot more, you know, um, control over exactly when your schedule will fire. Um, this is also the format that supports the traditional cron string. So if you're using an existing cron solution, you're migrating to temporal right now, uh, and you just want to, you know, take the exact, you know, format that you're using before and just paste it in and have it work, but durably with all the benefits of temporal, um, this will um, be the format that supports that type of string. And so um, you can also do, you know, this more like um, kind of object um, oriented way of specifying things um, if you want to do it that way. Um, but this is just, you know, one of the two um, main formats that we support for this new schedule actions feature. So that's the spec. Um, obviously there's a lot more we could you know, go through and enumerate there, but I'm not going to cover it again. The docs do a great job. Awesome. So then the third uh, piece of configuration that we're going to need to specify are the policies. Um, policies are the things that, uh, you know, make it possible to intricately and precisely control how your schedule behaves in different scenarios and contexts. Um, so there's really two main things that we want to talk about here. Um, the first one is the catch up window. Um, a catch-up window pretty much describes um, the behavior of your schedule in the case where the temporal cluster goes down and during that period of downtime your schedule was supposed to fire. Um, so imagine the temporal cluster is down um, and then it comes back up uh, and right one minute before it came back up there was a schedule that was supposed to have fired but temporal cluster wasn't up so it didn't. Um, the default catch-up window is one uh, minute which means that in that case that schedule would actually still fire because it was in the last minute um, and even though the cluster was down based Based on the catch-up window, if it's one minute, which is the default, um, it will still fire because it's within the window. Now, what we're specifying here is one day, which is a bit more of a leeway, which means that anything that would have fired in the last day, even if the cluster was down, um, will be fired when the cluster comes back up again, as long as it was supposed to have fired just in the last day. So that's the catch-up window. Um, you can, you know, provide pretty much any uh, time range that you want there. Um, so then we're going to move on to the overlap. Now, the overlap policy um, really is targeting the situation where you have a scheduled action um, that creates a workflow execution when it fires. Um, and you know, for some reason, maybe there's a bug in that workflow execution, maybe it just takes a long time to run. Um, when your workflow, uh, or when your schedule is set to fire the next time, that workflow execution that was you know, created from its previous run is still running. So like, what should Temporal do? Now with the Temporal uh, cron that's the legacy solution, you basically couldn't control this behavior at all. Um, but what we've been uh, able to do is surface this overlap uh, policy that allows you to very, very, um, you know, finely control um, how you want your scheduled action to behave in the case where the workflow execution that it previously started is still running in the case when the next one is about to start. So um, I believe the default, uh, you know, policy here is um, for it to be skipped. Uh, and what that means that is if a workflow execution is running from a previous um, time that the schedule fired and a new one is about to start, um, it will just be skipped and, and it will not run um, until basically it fires again. And only if that workflow execution from the previous run or any historical run um, isn't, isn't open and it has also um, already closed. Uh, and so this is the default, um, but you might've seen that I had this allow all here. Um, and this is actually the only option that you can specify to the overlap uh, policy that will allow multiple workflow executions to be running at a single time for a given schedule. Um, and so what allow all says is that, you know, no matter what, if a schedule is set to fire um, and, you know, create a workflow execution, create that workflow execution, even if there's already a workflow execution that has been created and is still running and open from that schedule. Um, and so there's a bunch more options that you can specify here. You can have one that, um, you know, cancels uh, the running execution if a new one is supposed to be started. Um, you can choose to buffer them. So there's only one running at a time, but they will all eventually be processed, um, you know, given enough time. Um, and so that's uh, it for the policies. Um, now to kind of put this all together, as you can see here, we're using the temporal client to actually create this schedule. Um, the only kind of net new thing that you haven't seen already is the schedule ID. Now, um, you know, this is pretty much the exact equivalent of like a workflow ID for, you know, the concept of starting a workflow, but it's, you know, for the schedule level. Um, and so every schedule needs to have a unique business level identifier. This is what will show up in the UI and how you can reference it in the future if you want to update it or edit it or anything uh, along those lines. So 
Um, I think that, you know, that covers the, the high level of, you know, how we actually, you know, define the schedule, at least from the SDK point of view. Um, so now let's go ahead and, and try things out. So again, um, I'm using the temporal TypeScript samples. And so, uh, you know, we have a bunch of very convenient scripts that we've defined as part of the sample um, that I'm going to rely on. Uh, and so the first thing that we can do is actually use this schedule.start uh, to actually start, uh, you know, the schedule. Uh, and so what we should be able to do now, um, I'm going to go over and use the, you know, temporal UI. Um, we can see now here that, uh, you know, if we go to the newly added um, schedules area, um, that there's this schedule running. Um, and, you know, we can see now that there's some very useful information that's been propagated to this part of the UI. Um, we can see when it was created. We can see how frequently it's set to run, which is every 10 seconds. That makes sense. Um, we can see what the recent runs were. Um, we can see that this one is still running. Um, we can see what the upcoming runs uh, are, and we even have some ability to control things, which we'll get into in a minute. Now, um, we're gonna go ahead and refresh, and what we'll see here is that there's you know four separate um, runs that are going on right now. Um, and you know this kind of makes sense, although there's a bit of a question of why are they all running? Why have none of them completed? Um, and so what we can see here is that, you know, okay, there's no actual workers running. So um, what we can do to fix that is go back to the, uh, you know, terminal um, and use one of the other scripts that we have that's just um, created to start a worker. Um, and we'll go ahead and um, start that worker. And so what we should see here is a bunch of output from that workflow. Um, indeed, we, we do. Um, and so now if we go back into the UI, we should see that this workflow is completed, which it has. Um, and if we go back to our schedules, um, we should see that some of these runs are complete, which, which they are. Um, so this is just a very, very quick high level, um, you know, kind of overview of how you actually start a uh, scheduled action with um, Temporal um, and how you can kind of, you know, um, go and monitor it and understand what's going on through the UI. Now, uh, what I would love to do is kind of show you some of the mutation capabilities that we also have included um, and are even available directly from the UI. Um, and so I'll start by um, actually editing this uh, scheduled action and changing the, you know, things that we configured it to do. So right now we can see that, you know, the frequency is set to be every 10 seconds. Uh, so what we can do now is go into this interval and make it 20 seconds. And we'll go ahead and just do that and save it. Um, as you might have seen, there's also an ability to change like, you know, the workflow type and the task queue and all that. And, you know, that's interesting, but it will cause me a bunch more work. I'll have to go and change my code and stuff. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that today. Um, but what you can see here is that the update was successful. We can now see that this frequency is every 20 seconds instead of every 10 seconds. Um, and so, you know, if we look historically, we were seeing, you know, 50 and then 40 and then 30. So what we should expect to see is this now change. Um, and so what might have happened right now is that we're, uh, you know, just still catching up from what we had running already. And so I'm guessing if I refresh now, um, we can, uh, you know, see that, you know, there's now a 20 second gap instead of a. Interesting. That's much larger than 20 seconds. I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. Uh, let's give it a second. Just maybe. Um... There we go. Um, Oh, I see. It might, um, part of the problem, I think, is that it might still be showing us older workflows that were even before what we just saw. So if we go here, yeah, we can see that um, starting after this update here, we can see 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 0, which means that it indeed has been updated to be this 20 second interval instead of just, uh, you know, the original 10 seconds that we configured from the code. Um, now, to go over a few of the other capabilities we have here. So the first one is um, pause. This is something that's kind of a net new because, uh, you know, we don't even have this capability for temporal workflows right now. Um, so we can go ahead and pause this, uh, you know, scheduled uh, action. And then we should be able to, you know, like refresh and see um, that no more new ones get started. And even if we go to, um, you know, the workflows, we can see that the last one, um, this was 20 seconds. Uh, so if we refresh a few times, we'll see no, no new ones come in because it is indeed uh, paused. So now what I'll do is I'll go back um, and just to kind of prove that, you know, things really do work, um, I will unpause it uh, go ahead if we wanted to. Uh, and so now what we should be able to do is go back. Um, and the last one again was this one right here. So we should just be able to see that, you know, after a few seconds, uh, this will update. Now it may take a second because again, um, it's not going to like, you know, bring up the uh, catch up window into effect because that only applies uh, for workflows that are, um, you know, not able or scheduled actions that are not able to fire because the temporal cluster is down. But we can see here, this one is running. So it did, it did pick it back up. 
And so um, these are, you know, the main things um, that, you know, I wanted to show with this new um, super exciting scheduled actions functionality. Um, to close things out, I will delete it, which is, you know, um, it's even more uh, sort of like forceful than like what you see with the workflow terminate. Um, but I'll go ahead and delete this schedule, which means that, you know, maybe the workflow executions that it already started will, will close out and finish, but no more new workflow executions will start um, because that thing will no longer be firing. And as we can see, um, even the workflow that we use internally to manage the scheduled actions itself, because we built it with workflows, um, that's very meta and temporal of us. Uh, it has even terminated because we've uh, deleted that schedule and therefore there's no reason for that workflow that backs it to still exist. So uh, I hope this got you excited about the new scheduled actions uh, functionality um, that's already available with the 120 release. Um, as always, if you have any feedback questions, please come and find us, find me, and I'm happy to help and answer anything that I can.